Are you able to do all the exercises? Well, we're okay. Okay, maybe I don't know. We, we can discuss the exercises afterwards. And today we can continue the, the theory. Or are we going to have tutorials for? I have to find somebody. I, I didn't ask. Uh, I can ask in any case. Um, but we can do the exercise maybe afterwards. Huh? Well, let's see. Just. But th there were three exercises, right? And some of them did you manage? There was one which was not difficult. I mean, the one for which the, the jump does not move, that is not uh, in a distributional solution. That's okay, no? The others. Which were, which were the others? One was... Uh, one was with the seat of embedded curve. Yes. And then you got to... Ah, to show that uh, you, the normal must be orthogonal to capital yeah. A. Yeah. That was one. And the other one was... Ah, this we will do. I think we will do. We will do today. And the, for concerning the, I can tell you the idea for the case of the embedded curve. So suppose that you are in Px, and suppose that uh, your curve is just this, no? J of u, say something like this and you minus on one side and you plus on the other side. Okay, so you plus. So what could you do? This is a smooth curve. You can take a tubular neighborhood like this of one region, you know, and you integrate uh, so you, you, are, you have a distributional solution, so you know that u phi t plus a phi x is 0 uh, for any phi, uh, for any compactly supported phi. Smooth. So take a, a phi which has compact support here. Okay. So you integrate uh, over this region. So and so these objects, and so you have to integrate first uh, here, where u is equal to u minus. No? And then you have to integrate, you have to integrate here where u is equal to u plus. Then, no? so we know u is distributional solution, so this must be 0 for any phi, say, far from this axis. We don't care about the initial condition. So we fix uh, a tubular neighborhood. You have a curve, so you can take the points at distance less than rho from the curve, where rho is small. So it's, it's an object like this. No? So, and then I take a function phi supported here. So phi is 0 out of this uh, and it's sort of ellipse. Okay? So the support of phi c is only what happens here and is 0 else. No? So I, I integrate now, and this integral is split into in the part above, say, and the part below. But above, I am u, u is constant, and below is constant. So I have this situation. Now I can use the divergence theorem for this. And the divergence, so now I am integrating on half of oh. region. So this, this integral becomes a boundary integral. So an integral over this red curve, right? 
with the, with the uh, outer normal, no? But phi is compact support. So here, here, and here, there is no flux, it's zero. I just have to integrate here, okay? So this becomes u minus times some integral over just this part of the flux, no? using the divergence theorem. And the same I do from the other side. But from the other side, uh, we have a change of sign in the normal. So we get the same session in one. No? And this integral is concentrated just here. And now you look at the, this is the normal to the jump times A. Phi. This must be zero for any phi with that properties, right? This is not zero because u minus and u plus are different. So what is what must be zero must be zero this for any phi. No? But in order this to be zero for any phi, it means that this must be zero pointwise at any point. I think this was your proof more or less. So necessarily this must be zero. This, this is the idea of the group. Just localize around the neighborhood of a point. And OK, so now let's let me see where we are. Yes, the, I think we have the, the non-homogeneous case. So, so let, let's, today we, we generalize our linear partial differential equation in the following sense. So today we consider similar, so we consider today given as usual uh, given vector in a ren, non zero, say, and given a function now, see, now let's see which kind of function, ut plus a dot grad u equal c, where c is a function of tx, no? and c here we can take uh, Maybe just continuous. Let's see. Let's see. Just continuous. So we look for a solution of this form, this problem, A B C one. Uh, And let me give a mu zero, u of zero z equal to zero. So suppose that also mu zero is given c one. So we look for we look for we want to solve. So it is clear that this is a generalization of what we did last week, because this is now not homogeneous, in the sense that the right hand side is not zero anymore. Okay, so we have this term here. Okay. Last week was identically zero function. Okay. Okay, now uh, the um, as you can see, the argument that uh, that lead us to the solution last time was that simply 
if here there is zero, then the gradient, the, the derivative of u al along the direction capital A must be zero, which was saying that uh, u was constant along these lines, uh, and therefore we had uh, all the all the story the whole last week. Do you remember? No? This is sigma, this is a vector field which is constant, capital A. It is constant and more importantly is never tangent to sigma, capital A is transverse to sigma, because there is one here. This is time. And what we did last time, we parameterized this line, uh, these lines, uh, and we deduced that the solution at the point here, Tx, no, we remember, let me record the solution here was exactly the value of u0 here. No, this was the idea. Uh, the fact that is that now, <coughs> clearly, this, this cannot be possible anymore. No? <coughs> the geometric interpretation we saw um, we saw uh, I think last week I think it was uh, concerned with the normal to the graph of u so the normal to the graph of u now so I don't remember the sign of the, the normals if you maybe you wrote it uh, the normal to the graph of u, we decide to take it, uh, uh, maybe, maybe it was this, ut uh, u minus 1, or, or was the other one? 1 plus ut squared plus, uh, uh, maybe it was like this. So uh, this means that this is an orthogonality relation between, so the PD, PD is saying that the scalar product between 1 times ut, 1 times ut, plus A scalar product gradu, minus 1 C, so I think it's uh, Ni graph u scalar product one a c must be zero. Right? With this sign. Because if I put this c on the left, so what do I get? U t plus a grad u minus c equals zero. Uh, minus c equals 0 and then I can divide everything by square root 1 plus ut squared plus u squared and so I get that this I can interpret as the scalar product of this vector times this hmm? So again, we have now in the space of graphs, so in R3, if n is equal to 1, the space of graph is in R3, we are looking for a surface of graph type, surface which is of gra a graph of something, smooth C1 surface graph of a C1 function, such that the tangent plane to this surface contains always this vector here. Hmm? Because the, the, this must be orthogonal to the normal, so this must be in the tangent. And moreover, this surface must coincide uh, with this graph uh, over the, at time zero. 
So again, is, uh, if you want, it can be interpreted geometrically. But now, so it's uh, the same, essentially same geometric interpretation. Last time, uh, last week, C was zero. No? So it was somehow si simpler. Same geometric interpretation, same similar geometric interpretation. As last time. Okay, now uh, the point is that uh, uh, it's more difficult and we have to... An interesting case, by the way, is when this is constant. This is interesting because it leads to the wave equation, we will see. So, it's not just for fun that I am generalizing. I am generalizing because I want to reach the wave equation, and for the wave equation, C is constant. So, uh, we will see that it's related to the wave equation with the constant Okay, now, uh, maybe it's better to write down uh, directly what happens to the characteristic, how the characteristic is, how the system, how the system, system of characteristics is modified. Because the idea is still to, to solve the PD via a system of ODEs. Hmm? So reducing the problem to a system of ODEs with parameters. So how the system of characteristics is modified, modified, and so I would like to use the same notation, I'm not sure. So uh, consider the system x dot of z, so, so given, given a point 0, Uh, given the point zero, say z in uh, sigma, consider uh, the system x dot of zero equal x dot of t equal a constant x of zero equal z y dot of t equal c of t x of t and y of 0 equal u0 of z. Now what is this? What is this? These are n equations, okay? So a system, but it's very trivial because this derivative is constant. So again, uh, the solution is, is exactly the same as last time. So it is x of t equals z, z plus t a. No? Because at time 0, I have to be in z. What changes here is that the, this equation is less trivial than last time. Because last time it was y dot equals 0. No, last time this was 0. And therefore y was constant equal to o 0 z. You remember? Now it's not true anymore. This is, uh, y is not constant anymore. But still, uh, this is not really an ODE. This does not depend on y. It's very convenient. It can be solved independently, immediately. Once you have solved this, you put x here and you get y of t. This is not an ODE, it's an, integra it's a, it's an integral problem, you have to integrate. This is one scalar function. So these are n, n equations. And this is instead one equation. So at the end, n plus one equation. Uh, this is not really, because it is not an ODE, because on the right hand side there is no y dependence. So just, it's, it's, you have to find the trinity, you have to integrate, okay? So, and this, so, uh, so let me call as, so 
if you want to interpret Z is given before. So you can look this at this system as a system with the depending on Z. Z can be thought of as a parameter. So a solution which depends on this choice, zero and z. Now, I don't indicate zero in the notation, but I still keep z in the notation. So the solution will be indicated as before, as last time, in the same way, OK? As last time. Even if the solution is different, I keep the same notation as last time. And the same for this, OK? So y of t are the unique global solutions. Unique global. Global means that they are defined for all t in R. For all t in R. So we don't have to invoke any kind of uh, uh, local existence theorem for ODEs, because this is trivially satisfied for any time, and this is not really an ODE, it's just a problem of integration. So we don't have to. It is clear that, by the way, if A, this is a very interesting case. I, I will talk this maybe the next time. Suppose that now also a, maybe c equals 0, doesn't care. But suppose that now a depends on t and x. So this is OK, trivial, but now this is not trivial anymore. This becomes really an ODE system of ODEs, a dynamical system. So if I have to, 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 if I want to have at least a local reasonable solution, I have to impose some condition on A, say locally Lipschitz uh, continuity or whatever. Okay? So, the, by the way, this case when A is not constant and C is zero is very, very interesting, in particular when A is not smooth. Okay, but not today. Today I want to discuss this, no? So do you remember the expression of, uh, we, we had a, a result last time Last time we deduced uh, when c was 0 that uh, we get, uh, so which was the idea? OK, the idea was that we record once for all that uh, once we solve this, we have a map. I call it maybe phi. I'm not sure, but I think, I think it was phi. Associating to any t and x this, uh, no, sorry, tz, maybe, or tx. Uh, which notation did I use? Do you remember? Tz. T -t -t -z. Okay. Tz, x, tz. Hmm? This was a diffeomorphism of this space into itself, a very special diffeomorphism because it was the identity in the first component. It's a global diffeomorphism, not local. It's global, because these objects are globally defined. They never intersect, etc. Et Therefore, it can be inverted. Huh? The, inverse was called, uh, the inverse was called phi to the minus 1. I don't remember. Maybe phi to the minus 1. I, I didn't give a name. In any case, uh, it was this inverse was sending Tx into Tz of Tx, I think. No? So I'm going from here to here. And the inverses keep the same structure, is the identity in the first component as this one. And this capital Z is simply the inverse of this map from a range into itself. No. And, uh, and then uh, the solution was, I think, simply, so, uh, x mark a, and this was the inverse u0 of z. I think it was this, no? By the way, this u0, however, when c is 0, was the solution of this. So this can be written as y of z of x. 
at the end, no? In that case, this was the general strategy. I want to keep the same strategy for this more general PD. Okay, so uh, um, what happens when C is not zero? Well, we have this system, but at the level of capital phi, nothing changes. <coughs> Why nothing changes? Because this is only capital X, and capital X is this. Is is, uh, is this. Now capital X is exactly uh, the same as the case C equals 0. So we have the same capital phi is unchanged and the inverse is unchanged. What, in, what changes is Y of T. But still I can ask the question maybe I don't have now this, this the, the, I mean I don't have any more this equality here because this is this would mean that the solution is constant along characteristics. Characteristics are thin lines, but maybe I can still represent the solution as this. And indeed, the following I think this was the exercise. Uh, not, I don't know. Uh, I think this was the exercise, maybe, but anyway, let, let, let us write the theorem. under the above assumptions, the unique solution can be written yes. so we still have u of tx equal u0 f minus ta plus integral for any t and x. Huh? Now we have c tau. I think here we have x mm, minus d tau for any. Now I have to check a little bit for any t and x. N. Let me check the sign. Yes, I think it's correct. And it is equal to y of uh, z of dx. Y of uh, uh, sorry, y of t z. Let me forget forgetting t. Sorry, there is a t here because y uh, depends on t, no? So y of t, z of t, x. Well, y, where y solves on d, solves on d, and x. Z is the inverse is the inverse as well. And is explicit in this case the inverse is, uh, is just a matter of changing so is the inverse. So you see uh, this uh, this is a new thing. It's a complicated new thing. No? Something new appears in the solution. Of course, when C is 0, we get the previous solution. But when C is not 0, no. Uh, so it is the sum uh, of the solution of the previous case plus something. And this something. Um, This something is the solution of a homogeneous problem 
no? Solution of well, okay, uh, homogeneous problem that the time tau coincides with uh, uh, time tau uh, homogeneous problem where in place at any time at tau at any tau in place of A one has C of has in place of uh, sorry in place of U zero you have uh, C of tau dot no? This has the same structure, remember, u0 of this translation. No? Now fix tau, and you take tau as your new initial time. Instead of time 0, you start from tau. No? x of tau equals something. No? And then you see this, the structure of this is, uh, as before, if you fix that tau, you have a translation x minus something multiplied by a, like this, x minus something multiplied by a. And now t is not t because uh, it is t and tau because tau is the new origin of times. Okay, so this reminds the previous case where you have changed time tau at any tau, and but the structure is very similar. No? Okay. Now uh, let's uh, let's. Uh, so how to prove this result? So first of all, u zero is c one by assumption. C is continuous by assumption. So I am integrating. So th this object is still c one. Okay. So regularity is okay. Now, uh, one should check that this solves the PDE. And then one, one should check that any solution of the PDE must be of this form. In this way, we prove existence, uniqueness, regularity, and representation. Okay. okay. So, uh, Okay, let's suppose that uh, we will look at this and we start to differentiation. So, ut is equal to grad minus grad u0. So, let's first do at time 0 what happens. Okay, at time 0, u of 0x, so u of 0x. This is u0 of x, and this is 0. So at time 0, we, we take the boundary, we take the initial condition point-wise perfectly well. Okay? Okay, now let, let's do ut. Okay, plus c, t x t x right let's do grad u it is grad uh, grad u zero uh, for the the t the derivative the, there is also t inside the integral. Ah yes, uh, there is there is also your life. There is also uh, why you say that that I have uh, uh, you're saying this, no? Uh, the, the I have what? Uh, what do you have? A gradient uh, of. Uh, 
I have to differentiate these ones and then give this. Then I have to take this and take the derivative of this with respect to t. Right? So this gives me the gradient of c evaluated here multiplied by, uh, I think there is a minus, right? Scalar product multiplied by a. Uh, right? Now let's do the um, the gradient of u, uh, the gradient of uh, u zero, the gradient of u. Sorry, the gradient of u. This is gradient of u zero plus. Now I have just one term here. Zero t, and then I have grad c. Uh, grad c. And that's it, no? And then I have it. That's it. Uh, no. I don't like this way. Let me see. So what happens? I take scalar product with A. Okay, so this is the uh, grad C. Uh, and that's it. This now, when I multiply scalarly with, uh, with A here, A is a constant vector. So I check that uh, no, UT, so scalar power with A. Now A goes inside and outside the integral because it's constant. Okay. Uh, so now ut plus this, uh, it's immediate to check that this cancels with this and this cancels with this. And so uh, it remains this, this right hand side. Okay. okay, but let us do, instead of doing this computation, let's, uh, let's look at this expression. Let's see if I, instead of doing this, I, I differentiate this quantity. Let's see what happens. Okay. So another, another way, let's see, so this, is, this is clear, no? It's clear, no? Now, uh, let's, instead of looking at this, so this is a solution, okay, this is a solution. Now let's look at what happens if I differentiate instead this. So this we agree. Now, forget for the moment about this expression and consider this. What is this? So, so ut is equal to y dot evaluated at t, etc. And then we have uh, dy over dzj, say, dzj, sorry, dz j over dt, so zj dot, zj dot. Hmm? We have this, no? Okay. This is ut, but y dot, uh, we know what is y dot, because that is C, no? uh, plus, uh, yes, and this I copy. So it's the gradient of E1. Ah, here I mean, I mean the sum. Eh? If the indices are repeated, there is a sum over J. Okay? So, yes, let me. Sum over J is implicit here because J is at the same indices. This is ut. Now, uh, now I have to take the gradient. So u over dx uh, i. Uh, so the u over dx i. What is the u over dx i? It is 
dy over d z uh, h say d capital z h over d x i Now I want to, uh, what do I do? I have to compare these two. So maybe there is a trick, I can differentiate. So I have this equality here, t, t is equal to uh, the inverse, uh, sorry, x is equal to so uh, no, no, no. Hmm. Well, I, I need some equality that I want to differentiate in time so let me see maybe z of t z of t of x of t delta. No? So if I do this, this is what? That is the identity, no? In z. Right? So this is an equality because capital Z and capital X are the inverse one each other. And I can differentiate this with respect to time. Let's see what that Let's see what happens if I differentiate this with respect to time. So I get zero. This is true for any Z. So this so Z so let me call Z dot y on z, y dot, z dot, yes, z dot plus dx, uh, x, x uh, z k over dx whatever j and then x dot j no summation over j so I differentiate this uh, with respect to so for any k because this is a vector equality, so for this, this is a, a vector in array, this is a vector in array, so I take the k component, so let me write it zk, zk, and then this I can differentiate with respect to, to time. Okay? But now I know what, what is x dot j, because x dot, x dot j is a, so this is equal to z dot k plus d z k over d x j h okay so now I can uh, I can uh, substitute this expression of z dot k here right now the indices unfortunately are mixed so let me now, I want to substitute this, this here. So if I change in, this is clearly, I can put a, a j here and then use another symbol to sum, no? So similarly, I get that 0 is equal to, for any j, z dot j plus e z j dx whatever l and l. Okay. No? 
because I want to compute this. Mm? So now this zeta j is minus this. Okay, so let me substitute here. y is the j set j dxl uh, a okay now if I take the scalar product of this with the vector a what do I have to do du over dxi ai is the scalar product, so sum over i. So this is equal to dy over dz h dz h dxi ai, which should be now now you, you take this plus this, so say one plus two. So this plus this means it is equal to C minus this plus this. And you can check that this cancels with this. So what remains is C. Yeah, really doesn't matter because this is summation over the ins, it doesn't matter how you call. H and H is sum over H, and I and I is sum over I. Here I is called L, sorry, H is called J, but of course there is no difference, no? Because there is summation over J over I. So uh, this means that this expression solves the PD. No? So uh, why I did this? Because, uh, because it seems that uh, for me that this, this, this way of writing the solution, this way of writing the solution, seems more suitable for generalization. Because this way doesn't use the expression of this map, just knowing that there is a solution y to sum of d, just knowing that I can invert the map capital Z, and I without using too much this, because this strange formula, I have proven that also this is the solution. Okay. So it, it's a much more general proof. There is this strange thing that I need to, to okay. uh, so, so we have shown that uh, if I write u is the, this way, this way, it is a solution. Now we have to prove that necessarily any solution must be of that form. And this we can argue like uh, we did, uh, like we did uh, in the case, in the homogeneous case. Okay. If you find the big Z, it becomes the same as If I find? If you find the Z by using the system. Z is always the same. Z is always the same. It's x minus t a. This is Z. Yeah, I think as the cone type is this. So this you can put freely without problems. You can put uh, uh, x minus in this case. Eh? Uh, y, I think it's the same. Uh, yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. It is surely the same because at the end the solution is unique, so no problem. You can, you can always you can, you can find directly by integrating mm -hmm. the, the, the by integrating. Yes, of course. Uh, so. In any case, uh, another way of proving this is clear that it's not difficult. Eh? But uh, let, let me tell you how one could argue also. So once that we have proven this, uh, okay. But another way to argue, which could be interesting, is again to 
look at the restriction of, so take any solution, let u be a solution. So you want to show that necessarily this u must have that form. Okay? And now, uh, so suppose that we, without using the system of characteristics, okay, just to just uh, to, so. And now, what do you do? One one idea. So, so you could consider, as last time, you could consider the restriction of u to a characteristic line. Okay. So uh, let me call this this f. So fix. Uh, so the. Like, like exactly in the, uh, the same ar argument we did uh, fix a point uh, uh, and the same argument so we, we do we restrict uh, the solution which is given to the line to the characteristic line passing through t and x okay? and I use another parameter tau Okay, x plus uh, tau, x plus tau uh, a. Okay, so it is uh, u of p x plus tau one. So we take just parametric, uh, we parameterize the line and. Uh, we simply consider this. And then we start to do derivatives and we do what happens. So f is of course c1 because it's, u is supposed to be c1. So I can go on with the following computation. So let me do a f dot d over d tau. And let's see what happens to this. So this is just f, is the, just the restriction. To, to the uh, projected, I don't, know, I don't remember, maybe I call this projected characteristic, characteristic passing through Tx. Okay, so well, let's see. This is equal to ut evaluated here. Okay, t plus tau x plus tau a plus uh, grab u t plus tau x plus tau a uh, scalar product with a. Now, we know that u is a solution, so this plus this must be equal to c, uh, c tau, this must be equal to c t plus tau, so ut at any point plus grad u at the same point must be equal to c at that point. No? So, so we have this, no? Right? This is for any time. So I can integrate this in tau. So let me integrate in tau. Uh, integrate in tau, let me call rho. Okay. E over d rho. Otherwise, I call rho, d rho. So this integral, which is clearly f of rho, f of tau minus f of zero, this must be equal to the integral from zero to tau uh, c t plus uh, rho x plus rho a. Okay. So we have this, this, and what is f of zero? So f of 0, and this is true for any tau, eh? for any tau in R. 
Now, f of 0, by definition, is clearly u dt u of tx. So we have that uh, from this, uh, we deduce that u of tx, which I put on the right hand side, must be equal to this minus this. Okay? So for the moment, we reach the following conclusion that fixing t at x, fixing t at x, for any tau, u of tx u of tx must be equal to f of tau minus the integral from 0 to tau uh, c t plus rho x plus rho in h no? This we know. Okay, do you remember last time what we did? Uh, so, imagining that we are here at Tx, the idea was to go uh, if, the, if the, the parameter tau was going this that parameterizing the line in this direction, the idea was to go back, starting from here, of a quantity of minus t. No? So now this is true for any tau. So I can and t has been fixed before. <coughs> so in particular it is equal for it, it is true for tau equal minus t. No? <coughs> so let me put this is true for any tau. T has been fixed. In particular it's true for tau equal minus t. So let me do let me write now now it means that in particular if tau is equal to minus t, what do I get? I get u of tx equal to f of minus t minus integral from 0 to minus t, no? C uh, yes c of uh, t plus rho x plus rho a zero. and f of minus t by the way what is f of minus t here uh, if tau is minus t this is zero and uh, uh, this is equal to x minus t no? but u is a solution so at time 0, it must be equal to u0, right? So we are almost done, because u of tx now turns out to be equal to u0, u0 uh, x minus ta minus this strange integral t plus rho. Uh, x plus rho a zero. And now uh, the, 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 the natural thing to do, hoping that I am not made, I don't, I didn't make some mistake, is to change variable in the integral. T is fixed, rho is moving. So I ch call this uh, another name. I call this uh, I call this S. So fixing T. I call this S. No? So what happens? That integral minus integral 0 minus t becomes what? So when rho is 0, right, this is t.
Oh, when rho is minus t, this is zero. C of s, x, and rho is s minus t. S minus t. No? D uh, s. And now it's immediate that, uh, okay, you, you, you change uh, the ex extrema of integration. Is it C of O? Is it? C of S. C of, uh, what, what do they do? Uh, X C plus rho. Rho is S no. minus T. Rho is, is C. Ah, yeah, sorry, rho is S. You're right. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Rho is S. This is S. And then, uh, and then uh, this is minus T minus S. No? I can write this instead of plus S minus T, I can write it as minus T minus S. And I think that uh, the previous formula S was called uh, tau. It's, the, it's what we want to prove. Okay, nice. So we have also, we have also, now I leave you an exercise, home exercise. Uh, so home. Let n equal 1, a real number, say non zero. Find this one solution solution to ut plus a ux equal e minus t minus x uh, and uh, u of 0 x equal sigma Sinus of x. Ah, sine. Yes, sir. You are right. Sinus. Thank you. Sinus of x. So this is, as you can imagine, it's just an application of the previous formula. So it's, it's a matter of doing an integral at the end. But why not just take some. Now, uh, the definition of distributional solution, maybe we can do. Uh, uh, okay, definition. Let u0 in L1 lock. We say that u in a row lock is a distributional solution. Uh, sorry, let, let me work in a strip. Uh, just uh, is a distributional solution. 
And now, again, what, what, what do we have? We have uh, to be careful, but I think that nothing changes very much. So for n phi in C1 tilde, which means that uh, it is C1 in the whole space and compactly supported, but it detects sigma. So it's not zero on sigma. Zero at time capital T, but on sigma is not zero. No? Remember the same class as last time. So we have so we have, we have to write something. So U is just in a low log, so no derivatives must appear in this expression. All derivatives must be. Uh, uh, and then we have uh, the boundary term. So the boundary term was u zero, u zero five dx equal c. Okay. Last time, in the last week, uh, the right hand side was zero clearly because C was zero. Now it's not zero. So is it so exercise? Is it true? Is it true that uh, now it's clear I have enlarged a lot the space of solutions because you see if you if you zero is very smooth then we have two possible notions of solution the classical one and this one. But we know that the classical one is also a distributional solution because you can integrate by parts. So the problem is that uh, is this class too large? Uh, namely, maybe existence is not difficult, but uniqueness because becomes false. So is it true or not that uh, there exists uh, so that a solution? A distributional solution. A distributional solution. Ocean solution to uh, in this sense, eh? So, in the sense of star is unique. Is it clear the philosophy of the problem? So we have, for some reasons, we have decided that uh, could be a good idea to weaken the notion of solution. Instead of C1, much less. But in this way, doing this, maybe the class of solutions becomes too large. Could be that uniqueness is lost. Could be, we don't know. So now the idea would be Suppose that you have two solutions, u and v. So two functions in L1 log, which satisfy star. Both of them satisfy star. What would you do? You have star for u and star for v, which would be a, a good idea. Take the, the difference. Well, if you take the difference, what happens? Okay, this. 
is the same both for u and for v because they satisfy the same uh, initial condition. So this is the same for u and v. This is also the same for u and v because here there is no u, there is no v. C is the same for u and v. Right? So for any test function phi of this form, if I take the difference, I, since this is linear in u, what do I get? I get u minus v equal to 0. For any phi. Now the problem is that this we don't know. We have to show that u is equal to v almost everywhere, right? They are a, 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 a non law. So saying that u is equal to v almost everywhere is equivalent to say that this is zero for any psi, t minus c1, whatever. No? So if I want to show that u is equal to v, it's sufficient to show this equality in a weak sense in measure theory. Okay? It's sufficient to show this. This is not what I had, because here there is not any, any arbitrary psi. This for any psi. For any psi C1. Huh? It's not true for any psi, but it's true for psi of this form. <laughs> so what, what do we think to do? But if I fix psi, I know this. I want to show this. So take psi. I know this, but if, if this is equal to psi, then I'm done. Right? Can I solve for smooth psi this equal to psi? Yes, it's the previous theory. Okay. So. This is the idea of the exercise. We can say u and v equal to the next one. Yes, they are in one lock. They are equal to the two percent. They are in n one lock. No more than that. They can be equal to uh, almost everywhere. Because we are in n one lock. So functions are not any more functions, are equivalence classes. No? Okay. Now, last final thing. Last Maybe did, did I? There was another exercise that I did you last time. Yes, uh, to generalize the, the distribution solution in ah, R in R one lock for any for any use in R one lock. So uh, ah yes 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 the exercise was the following. Yes so. So if I ask, yes, yes, so uh, that's still the distribution of solution. Ah, yes. So the exercise was the following. If u0 is in L1 lock, then u of tx almost everywhere defined as usual. Is a distribution solution. This was the, the exercise, no? Is a distribution. Did you do this?
Did you, did you, did you do this? Huh? No, this was too difficult. Huh? Oh, but I think that the idea is again it's simply a change of variables. So, uh, so you have to prove that uh, uh, you have to prove that u find p plus u. Zero phi equals zero for any phi, no? Okay. Uh, and the suggestion could be could be could be to consider instead phi of t. Uh, the composition, so we have the map phi, capital phi, p, z, into p, x, z. Right? This is the... This was for the homogeneous problem, right? This was for the... So we have the diffeomorphism. So the idea could be simply to, uh, to, re to rewrite, to do a change of variable in the integral, and to write uh, phi hat. Uh, so given phi, you can consider this. So you have a phi, which is distributed uh, is a test function here, here, and you simply uh, the test function here transport it backwards using the capital phi. Mm. And write this uh, changing, so write this in terms, so the suggestion could be write this in terms of uh, of uh, phi hat and use the change of variable form uh, change of variable formula in the integrals what is the change of variable form in the integrals so if I integrate so if I have a map if I integrate the determinant into some open set, uh, into some open set, uh, what do I get? I get uh, dy, and then I get phi of omega here. And then if I have a function, F of X okay, this is the one way of writing the so this is the suggestion okay By the way, u is u0, no? So this is u0 of x minus ta. Then here there is tx. And here, sorry, this is phi. Eh? Sorry, this is a mistake. This is phi. Eh? I wrote this is wrong. This is phi. Phi of tx. Okay. So you have uh, to, to write. Uh, 
this expression in terms of uh, of phi hat and change variables. This, you know, this is the inverse back. Eh? So it's exactly what you need. So try to do this. It's not uh, it's not difficult. This is the suggestion. Okay. Now um, the the next step. Uh, I don't want to say too much on this. Uh, is the general linear case. So now I think we can the general linear case. So we want to consider the following. Now we don't want to be very uh, very careful about the initial condition, u0 is ultra smooth, but we want to maybe do this. Okay, this is the general linear case. Huh? This is the general I don't want to say too much about this, but uh, so, uh, uh, so it is clear that we need some, some assumption on functions A, B, and C, and we look for the assumptions for which the system of characteristics has a global solution in time. Okay, so uh, what is reasonable to do? Well, C we have seen before. Let's see, uh, C0. Uh, for A, or A, A is the most, maybe the most important thing. We want to solve. Uh, we want to be sure to solve the system of characteristics, no? This will be the first part of the system of characteristics. What do you need on the vector field? Now A is a vector field, is a real vector field, it's not just constant. It changes from point to point. No? So the situation is that you have given a vector field on sigma everywhere, so in particular on sigma which is transverse, but it never tangent here, but it varies somehow. No? And capital A of Px uh, is the 1 A of Px. Okay. Now, if you go back about what you have studied, I think you have studied uh, the uh, solution of a, uh, this is a dynamical system, no? So if I call a couple of things. No? It's a dynamical system depending on a parameter z. Once I've given 0 and z, I can solve, at least locally. But I want to keep the global... OK, locally is, is not too much, it's not sufficient for today. I want to solve the system of all these. Now it's less trivial than than before, because A is not constant. Uh, and I want to solve it globally. Globally means that I have trajectories starting uh, at any point, and this trajectory may be curved, because now they are not any more lines. So this is sigma, and then I take, I have my vector field, and A, you know, everywhere. And I'm looking for the flow lines, you know, but I, I want uh, I want these flow, flow lines to be curved, local, sorry, uh, uh, to be uh, to intersect sigma transversely as usual. This is okay, and also I want uh, this to f to fill the whole space. No, to make a so-called maybe foliation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, of your space, so they 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 live for all times. They are graph 
and this graph over these vertical lines. They don't do strange things. I mean, they, 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 they never intersect each other, for, even for large times, and they cover the whole space. This is what I want. No? So this should be reflected in the assumption that I do on small a. Which are the assumptions that give me, provide for sure, uh, um, global existence, existence of a global solution for this dynamical system. Global, for any time, not just local. Uniqueness and existence. Yes, Lipschitz with respect to which variable? Exactly, so it must be Lipschitz with respect to this variable, and but this Lipschitz constant should depend or not depend on time? No. Not depend on time. So uniform in Lipschitz, for any time I have the same Lipschitz constant in the second uh, set of variables. And maybe if you remember also, if you look at the existence proof for a, for a, for a, for a not for an ODE, when there is problem, when may happen that the existence time when, when the solution can go up. If you look at the estimates that you have for, for the solutions, there is also the infinity norm there. Huh? So uh, if you look at the, the existence time, if the, the infinity, it depends the existence time on the, the infinity norm. Oh. So, so it's, it's better to take a, say in an infinity, just to be sure, so bounded, bounded, and uniform ellipses, and say that there exists a, a constant L positive such that for any t in R, say A of t uh, x1 minus, minus, sorry, a of t x2 less than or equal uh, of l x1 minus x2 for any x1 x2 in uh, This is what you say. So you are saying that if this variable is Lipschitz, Lipschitz constant l, and this L can be taken independent of T. Moreover, A is a bounded vector field. So, now uh, concerning C, I don't really know, but uh, uh, let, let, us, let us try to imagine. Uh, can you imagine the equation for Y now? But I give you, I give you a hint. Uh, let, let us write this as C minus B dx U equivalent. What could be the equation now for Y? Why dot? Let's say I'm trying to guess the system of characteristics. In particular, these are an equation. Now they are true or the differential equations. We, have, we need one more just only one uh, or the differential equation, y dot equal to before it was remember it was uh, c of t x of t. Yeah? So now it's quite more it's quite complicated because this is not explicit anymore, but at least uh, it, it does not depend on y, fortunately. It does not depend on y, so I can again still if I'm lucky, solve this by itself. Once I solve this, I can put it here and try to solve this. But this is not the only. What do you imagine? There is something here. What do you think? What Minus B of T. Z. Mm. This U is is related to Z or to Y. Oh, yes, why? So there is, there is, uh, 
Why? And now again, this is uh, uh, is not as before. Before we had this, and this was just uh, we have to look for a primitive, no? Now we don't have a, we have we have uh, a, you know the a true of the which is however linear in y with non constant coefficients. So I think that uh, the integral of um, C C zero intersection. I don't know. So B maybe B is something like uh, C zero just because we want everything to be C one. C was uh, was C zero, is it? B C zero, I say maybe I don't know intersection sign, maybe L one. Maybe L one. Well this is a linear a linear system of ODE, a linear ODE, so you see now this is more complicated, but still, still, fortunately. The expression y of t z of t x is still meaningful to, to try to, to look for a solution, provided that we are able to invert the, the diffeomorphism phi. We have to show phi is a diffeomorphism and so on. But still, this, this is a general way to try to express the possible solution. And uh, ah, final comment. Final comment. Okay, the linear case is interesting. Uh, even recently, has been, been a lot of people studying the linear case, but they were interested actually to c equals zero, b equals zero, but this unfortunately not smooth and so bad. So bad, uh, so, 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 so bad such that this cannot be solved uniquely. Like you know, the Peano phenomenon, the uniqueness. So, uh, so this is still uh, it's not, it's a difficult problem. Okay. Final comment uh, uh, this is the linear case, but it's easy to imagine how to modify this to make it much more difficult uh, not linear but say quasi linear in some sense putting a dependent on u here it's, you know, it's not linear anymore because now it's not linear because a depends on linearly of u and the system of characteristics now as you can imagine, is finally is coupled. They are coupled together. This depends on y, this depends on x, they are coupled. Now this is, it requires another kind of reasoning. It's, it's, very, it's very interesting, but much more difficult. So uh, I think that maybe for concerning first order, this is uh, what I want to say. And tomorrow we go. To, the, to, to study the wave equation, which is a second of the PD. Okay?